That was back in 1970, 1974. The organization went on to establish uh, guidelines. They elected George Lane as the first president um, of the caucus. And at the same time, uh, Howard University was being, um, I think, kind of revolutionary in starting the first occupational therapy program at the HBCU. And the person you see as the trailblazer is named Naomi Wright, who founded the chair of that department. Now, to the left of that is our Facebook. <laughs> this was the first issue of the VOTC newsline. And most of you don't know anything about mimeograph paper, do you? I best look back at those days. You type in and you put this sheet in between two sheets of paper, and then after you've got the, the part with the ink on it, you took it to the spin and you rolled it and rolled it, and you had this kind of manual, and that's how we got our newsletter. And the newsletter was our main way of communicating with one Because remember, we were only meeting at the AOTA conference. We didn't have, we did not have our mail back then. We had something called, what, snail mail. Now, in, 19, in 1970, in the 1970s, let me just read what I wrote over my skin. Um, as I said, we agreed to be that annual conference. Oh, also chapters were established in the 1970s in um, cities where there were major populations. Like we had a, we had a chapter in, in Detroit, Michigan. There was one in New York City that was still around. We had one in Washington, D.C. And we had one in Southern California. So these are some of the uh, chapters that were established back then. In 1977, we got a second president, George Spillerspoon. Uh, she was the director of the OT program at uh, Wayne County Community College. Now, how much do you think this was in 1979? <laughs> <laughs> In 1979, the caucus had 90 pay members and two wives. Get this, $10 for a week, $5 for OTAs, and students for a Also in the 1970s, Lila Lorenz, Wimberly Edwards, and Dottie Wilson are named as AO, named to the AOTA process. to become uh, members of the AOTA ad hoc 
They came to our meeting in Denver, and I haven't seen them since. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
and to do it in this fashion. They allowed me to tag along <laughs> in the process. They uh, tolerated my ancient remarks. <laughs> They've been very gracious with me. But I am just so excited to have these young people heading the organization. Because in them, what we have are individuals who are dedicated to the growth of the organization. Mm -hmm. They are committed young people. They sacrifice their time, their energy, and their money to get us to this point. They are focused. They understand the importance of this work. They respect those of us who have contributed to getting us to this point. And I would like for the following people to stand. And then I'll be done. Is my five minutes up? <laughs> I don't want to be like Joyce Lane. <laughs> All of the current EOTC officers, please stand. So we can give you a round of applause.
I am deeply honored and humbled to be the recipient of District Distinguished Service Lipscomb Award. To be recognized among so many individuals in this field is truly overwhelming. First and foremost, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to the National Black Occupational Therapy Fund and the Scottish Journal Committee for this incredible the recognition of my work means more to me than I can put into words. My mother always told me, you put your skills, and I truly began to understand the meaning of my education. My hard work and dedication is finally paying off. I also want to thank my amazing faculty. Without you, know this would be possible. Your tireless dedication, brilliant, and camaraderie inspires me every single day. This award belongs to all of us. To my mentors and my colleagues who have guided me and supported me through this journey. Thank you for generously sharing your wisdom and experience. I am forever grateful. And to my family, friends back home, your unwavering love and encouragement mean the world to me. Thank you for everyone for being here for being my foundation. In closing, I am deeply moved to receive the Francis Smith Award. I will strive to uphold the values and legacy that it represents. My commitment to advancing our field and making a positive impact on the village is strong. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. I am truly blessed. Have a wonderful day.
the Texas Black Occupational Therapy Dolores B. Chandler Scholarship, which they prevent 